Hello everybody, in this video we're going to be going through conditions that allowed life to survive for your AQA A-level environmental science. Now, to go with this video, over on the website there is a set of questions that will help you remember everything you've learned. So once you finish this video, you can go and do the retrieval practice. A-level environmental science. Topic 1, the living environment. Lesson 1. Conditions on Earth that allowed life to survive. We are starting right at the beginning, when Earth was formed around 4.6 billion years ago. During the early years on Earth, the conditions were extremely volatile, with many volcanic eruptions releasing carbon dioxide and methane into the atmosphere, as well as lots of steam. To understand some of the content delivered in this lesson, it is important that you know the internal structure of the Earth. Starting in the centre, you have the inner core, made of solid nickel and iron. Then the outer core, which is made of molten iron and nickel. Then the mantle, and surrounding it all is the crust. I would suggest ensuring you have a good diagram of this in your notes. There are five features of early Earth that made it suitable for life to survive. They are mass, magnetic field, speed of rotation, axis of rotation, and distance from the sun. Mass allowed two things to happen. The mass helps create the Earth's gravitational field, which prevents gases escaping, thus creating our atmosphere. Our atmosphere ensures gases such as oxygen are retained close to the surface, so we can breathe without it disappearing off to space. It also allows for the right temperatures and pressure for water to exist in its liquid form. The main role of the magnetic field is to deflect solar winds. Don't worry too much about defining solar winds. Simply put, it is charged particles being released from the sun, for example electrons. It is formed via the convection currents of the molten iron and nickel in the outer core. We will learn more about convection in another lesson, but for now, it is just movement of particles through a liquid or air. The Earth's speed of rotation and axis of rotation can group together as they both have roles linked to temperature regulation and seasonality. The Earth is slightly tilted on its axis by about 23.5 degrees. This, coupled with its speed of rotation, 24 hours, gives both day and night cycles and prevents any extreme heating or cooling in one area. Remember, the Earth is also orbiting the Sun, which means at some points in the orbit, the UK would be facing the Sun, but due to the Earth spinning on its own axis at the same time, we won't become completely overheated and still have day and night time. We are perfectly positioned in what is known as the Goldilocks zone. This is because it is just right. Not too close to the sun and not too far away. So suitable temperature ranges are maintained that life can thrive in and liquid water is present. Imagine if Earth was closer to the sun and therefore warmer liquid water might boil and leave us with just water vapour. In an exam, you may be asked why temperature is important. A lot of the factors we have explored in this lesson link to making the temperature just right for life to survive. Exam tip. A good thing to link this to in exams is enzyme activity. The proteins in your body that complete metabolic actions will denature and stop working if the temperature is not within the range of tolerance. Without these, we would not be alive. One final factor to think about that enabled life to survive here on Earth is the fact that we have lots of incoming solar radiation. The Earth receives ultraviolet light from the sun, which, if it reaches the ground, is either reflected or absorbed and converted into infrared radiation, heat. Whether it is reflected or absorbed depends on the albedo of the surface, otherwise known as the reflectivity. Snow, for example, has a high albedo due to its light colour, meaning it reflects a lot of radiation back into the atmosphere. Ouch! This is why in some videos I've explained scratches. 